The horizon is ours. Speak review. All right, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the first ever Horizon Musical Studio, Brenda Miller Piano Masterclass. Woo! I'm very excited to be here. I hope you all are excited. I'm very excited to have Brenda here. For those of you who don't know, I went to school with Brenda a million years ago at the <laughs> University of Sound, and uh, she is an incredibly talented pianist. Whole bunch of awards. She played in my senior composition recital. She's amazing. So let's start off with uh, Brenda. Can you give your, us a quick introduction? Um, who you are, your uh, a little bit of your piano experience, and what you get up to musically right now. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so as Daniel was saying, my name is Brenda. Um, we went to uh, University of Puget Sound together way back in the day. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been playing since I was, I want to say six years old. It's, uh, it's been quite a while. Um, and uh, I've, yeah, it's been a big constant in my life. Um, I'm always looking for great performance opportunities. Um, love, love performing. Uh, I've done solo performing. I've done uh, chamber music, so performing with uh, other musicians in a small group. I've performed piano parts in a large orchestra and I've had the opportunity to perform a couple of concertos as well. Um, so that's been a great honor, definitely a highlight in my in my musical career. Um, at the moment I'm actually, uh, I've got a lot of split interests, so I'm actually completing a graduate degree in environmental education right now. Um, but I am still working as a church pianist uh, um, I'm stationed in Ashland, Oregon right now, and I work at a church in Medford. Um, so I've been, yeah, I've been able to perform with them. Um, normally I would be accompanying the choir, but because of current circumstances, uh, we're just doing solo performances uh, virtually through live stream at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's been kind of my way of uh, keeping, keeping both of my interests active for the moment. Oh. I think that grad degree, but still performing uh, yeah, just a little more, a little more low key, not as intense at the moment. So yeah, performing through the church. Um, and yeah, after my grad program, who knows what will happen. It's kind of up in the air and I'm excited to see where it takes me. Awesome. So let's have the kids introduce themselves. Uh, we'll start with Waylon, then Xander and Liliana. Let's go with name, age, and your favorite flavor of ice cream. I will go first. My name is Daniel, I'm 25, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is coffee. All right, Waylon, let me unmute you, and go ahead, tell us your name, your age, and your favorite flavor of ice cream, Waylon. My name is Waylon, and I'm eight years old, and my, my favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate. A good choice, how about you, ooh, wait, where's Russell, Russell, Russell? There we go. How about you, uh, Xander? My name is Xander, and I'm nine years old, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is fudge. An excellent choice. And Liliana? My name is Liliana, and I am 10 years old, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate chip cookie dough. Also delicious. All right, wonderful. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start off with Waylon performing uh, Yankee Doodle and if time permits, Aura Lee, he'll get feedback from Brenda. Then we'll have Xander perform Sidewalks of New York and then Leiliana will perform Clementine. I'll give any closing thoughts. Brenda will give any closing thoughts and then we'll be all done. Once it's all over, I'll make a shiny polished video and send it out and you can share it with the world. All right, Brenda, anything else I'm missing or that you need to know? I don't think so. I'm just uh, pulling up the score you sent me real quick and I'm good. Fantastic. Okay, Waylon, let's start with you performing uh, Yankee Doodle, whenever you're ready, 
Right hand thumb on middle C, left hand thumb on the B below. Deep breath, take it away. Beautiful job. All right, Brenda, I'm going to mute myself and leave you two to it. Uh, you've got something like three or four minutes for the song. If you want to take more, that's fine, but uh, we'll move on to Xander in about seven minutes. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Thank you, Waylon. That was wonderful. Um, I really appreciate how you kept a nice steady tempo throughout your entire piece. Um, there wasn't very much uh, where you were rushing. It was all just like a very, very nice, easy tempo. It was very nice and steady. And I really, really liked that. Um, and your legato I thought was very nice too. The way that you were connecting the notes um, from one note straight to the next one. Uh, yeah, I thought you did wonderful there. Um, one thing that will help you a little bit as you uh, get a bit more experience and learn a bit more as you play is watching um, your wrist. So when we're when we're starting to play and we're playing our we're playing our uh, fingers on the keys, um, sometimes we have this habit of kind of dropping our wrist like this. You kind of understand what I'm saying there. Yeah, so that's something that's, you know, that you just get practice in and it might feel a little bit funny at first to um, try to adjust that. Um, but it really is going to help you be a, a stronger player as you go along. So one of the things that we want to make sure we're doing as if this was the keys, right, that our wrist is nice and parallel to the keys. So it's like on the same level. It's not falling down too much. And we're also not doing this, right? That would just be silly. So yeah, we just want to make sure to keep our wrist nice, nice and up, and a nice straight line, um, and keeping our hand too. See this, how this is nice and arched. All right, we don't want to have like flat fingers. I didn't really see flat fingers from you, but that's part of the thing when we have our wrist up like this and a nice straight line, then we'll have our hands in a bit more of an arch and that's going to make playing a little bit easier for you. Um, so. Could we actually try that? Maybe just the first, uh, let's say the first four measures of your piece and just try to keep your wrist up a little bit more as you're, as you're playing. Go ahead. Okay, great. So this, what I'm seeing from where I am is what we might need to do to help your, keep your arm up a little bit is actually boost up your seat a little. Um, so that's something, I don't know if any uh, parents are online with us today, um, but we may look into just like putting a pillow on your bench or um, some other kind of cushion so that you're sitting a little bit higher because that's gonna make it easier for you to kind of keep your arms up a little bit. Does that make sense? Excellent. Um, let me see. Yeah, I thought you did great. I'm trying to keep an eye on time. Did we want to, did we want to try and have that second piece as well? Yeah, or? yeah, we've got five minutes left, so uh, that works great. All right, Waylon, let's have you move on to Aurali. Go ahead and set yourself up, and whenever you're ready, deep breath, take it away.
agenda whenever you're ready. I'll unmute you. Go ahead. Thank you. Beautiful, Waylon. I loved it. Um, so one of the uh, other things that can help with um, to make our playing a little easier so we're not using up as much energy is whenever we have, uh, whenever we're playing notes that even if they're not connected, even if they're not legato, we still keep our finger on the key. So here, I'm actually going to go over to my keyboard as a little illustration here, whoops. So if we do this, if I'm wanting to, if I'm wanting to play like, say like this part right here, but it doesn't necessarily say to play it staccato or anything, right? It's just telling us that it's not legato. So what can help is to actually just keep our finger just on the top of the key and not let go, almost like you have a sticker on your finger and you're stuck to the key itself. So you're just kind of like this. See that how I'm not actually lifting my finger off of the key? Doing that is just going to, because every time we like lift our hands up and put them back down, that's extra energy that we're using. So if we save that energy, that's going to make it easier for you to play, and easier for you to get through the entire piece. Does that make sense? Yeah? Awesome. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, oh, just toward, uh, move back to my seat here. Just toward the end, when you have those, uh, those half notes and those whole notes, we just want to make sure to uh, fully count those out, like those are quarters. Um, sometimes when we have those really long notes, it can be very easy to lose track of how long they should be. Um, so if you just imagine like you're counting those quarter notes in your head, like because you played those quarter notes beautifully. It was very nice and steady and I loved it. You were just thinking like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So then when you get to those half notes, keep counting that beat in your head. So it's like one and two and one and two and. So it's nice and steady. It's still keeping that tempo um, and it might feel a little slow to you because we actually have a tendency to uh, sometimes, sometimes we can rush those notes. Uh, we get a little excited and we're just like, oh, we're close to the end. Um, but just make sure to keep that beat in your head as you're playing those long notes. Does that make sense? Wonderful. Uh, let's see. And I've got about a minute left. I mean, I, I loved your playing. I thought it was very, very nice and steady. Um, and I thought that your hands were really nice and balanced. I appreciate too that when you had um, when you had the melody switching from your right hand to your left hand, but it was still the same melody line. You kept it all nice and even, and that's something that can be very tricky. Um, so I really, really like that you still kept the melody very nice and even between those two hands. Um, so yeah, Waylon, very, very nice job. Thank you for playing today. Woo! Yeah, virtual hand four, Waylon. All right, Waylon, I'm going to mute you. Wonderful job. Proud of you. And let's move on to Xander performing Sidewalks of New York. Uh, let's see, Russell, unmute. OK, Xander, whenever you're ready, set yourself up. Take a deep breath and go ahead and get started.
All right. Um, I'll mute myself again. And Brenda, go ahead and get started. All right. Thank you, Russell. That was lovely. Um, any chance uh, in that household, if we could move the uh, computer closer to the keyboard at all? I had issues with the sound on my end. If it's not easy to do, don't worry about it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, Russell, I loved that. That was very lovely. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, I loved, again, your legato, so keeping those notes nice and connected, having a very nice solid melody line as you were playing. That was lovely. Um, I thought you had a very nice steady tempo throughout the whole thing. One thing to be careful of though when we're playing, uh, so when we have those half notes in there, we want to make sure to give them their full value. Um, my mistake, dad is Russell, kid is Xander. I'm very sorry, Xander, thank you for playing today. Um, so make sure we want to give those half notes their full value. Those half notes are there for a reason. We want to let them, we want to let them fully sink. Um, cause every once in a while I thought I heard that the half note sounded more like a quarter note. Um, and sometimes again, we get excited. We're like, oh yes, this is going so well. It's a lovely piece. Um, but we just want to make sure to kind of let those pauses happen. Um, so yeah, just, just make sure, keep an eye out for those half notes, make sure to give them their full value. Again, if it helps to count in your head, um, that, that can be a very nice thing. And um, professional musicians still do that all the time. They're counting in their head to make sure that those uh, notes are getting the full value that they need. Um, let me see here. Could you just play the first four measures for me again? I just want to see something really quick. Great, thank you. So I love how you're holding your wrists. I like that you're keeping them nice and level like this. It's a nice straight line. Um, and it looks like you weren't really lifting your hand too much as you were uh, repeating those notes in the left hand. That's all great. Um, I want to think of a little bit about with this piece, where is the melody in this piece? Is it in the left hand or in the right hand? If you were going to sing this piece in the right hand, right? Yeah, so we want to sing the right hand, which means that uh, we want to hear the right hand more than we want to hear the left hand because the melody is going to be the most important part. That left hand, the left hand is important because it gives us um, that beat and that pulse, and that's very good to hear. But the melody is going to be the first thing, the most important thing that we want to hear. So when we balance our hands, the left hand should be just a little bit quieter than the right hand. Could we try that, just those four measures again? And try and keeping your left hand a little bit softer. Yeah, exactly. And I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, uh, so I'm probably making you a little extra nervous, but you were, yeah, you did great. So keep thinking about that um, as you're going through this piece and really any other uh, music that you're learning, thinking about what is the melody, what's the most important thing that we want to listen to, that we want our audience to hear. And that's the piece that's going to be uh, given a little bit more volume. Does that make sense? Okay, great. And uh, is that is that an on time or do I have, I lost track. You have uh, four more minutes if you want to use them. If you feel like you're done, then oh, okay. we can totally move ahead. It's Beautiful. Okay either way. No, that's great. Um, let's see. Um,
one other thing that we can think about as we're playing too. Um, so looking at your music, you see those big legato lines in your music, Russ, uh, excuse me, Xander. I keep going by the names on the <laughs> Zoom card. These are the big legato lines. Yeah, so those big legato lines, those tell us to play connected, right? That's what legato means. Um, but those big long lines can also give us a bit of a hint about how to phrase a melody. Um, so generally when we see that big legato line, we can almost think of it like we're putting like a little bit of a crescendo at the beginning of that phrase and a little bit of a diminuendo at the end of that phrase. So it's kind of, kind of following the legato line, the sound is kind of creating an arc throughout that line. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Could we try playing just the first four bars again and try, try to add a little bit of that uh, dynamic where you have just like a little bit of an increase throughout the phrase and then you taper off at the end. Yeah, no, oh, that's great. Um, so that's something, and I know I'm filling your brain with all sorts of different things right now, and I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, you're doing great. Uh, so yeah, just kind of start considering that a little bit too about how, like what those lines mean and how we can sort of follow those lines as we go throughout the piece. Um, yeah, I, I think that's what I've got. I love your playing. I love how I love your posture. Your posture is great and it's going to be really helpful for you um, as you as you start to explore other pieces of music. Um, yeah, I think you did a fabulous job today. Thank you, Xander. Woo! And for Xander, yay! Okay, great job. And let's move on to our final performer, Leliana. All right, Leliana, whenever you're ready, go ahead and get yourself set up, take a deep breath and get started. And I will mute myself. Um, done, Liliana. Beautiful. All right, Brenda, I'm going to meet myself. Take it away. Thank you. That was beautiful. I loved how nice and steady you were. I love how you kept those not lines uh, very nice and connected. You did a very, very lovely job. Um, so one thing that uh, is going to kind of help with our technique and help with our posture, um, and this is more of an indirect thing, um, and parents, I'm not sure if you necessarily would have uh, one of these at home, but um, with rolling spinning chairs, uh, it actually uh, can cause, um, it can make it so that uh, pianists just sort of um, turn to reach towards other parts of the keyboard as they go. Um, and that's um, something that we really try to, encourage more of like just like a solid anchor and leaning back and forth like this rather than twisting 
around. Um, so I always encourage trying to play on just like a solid bench or stool, something that doesn't turn back and forth. Um, obviously, if that's what you have at home, then that's what you have. Um, and I don't want to tell you to go out and buy like another $50 piece of furniture or something like that. So um, we just want to make sure then um, as pianists ourselves that we're trying to keep ourselves rooted in our seat. So we're kind of leaning back and forth like this instead of twisting. And at the same time, that also means that even though we might want to kind of shift this way or back this way to try to reach those keys at opposite ends of the keyboard, we really need to be kind of keeping that nice anchor, like anchor ourselves in our seat um, and just rely on the upper half of our body to move around back and forth this way. That's going to just, that, that's going to help to be, to be more solidly anchored so you're not kind of like twisting around and doing all sorts of other things with your body. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. All righty, let's see. I'm glancing over your music over here. Yeah, I thought you did a very nice job uh, with the balance as well. Like you had the melody coming out very nicely. Um, we could still hear the other parts going on in the left hand, but I didn't think they were overpowering the melody. I thought that was some very, very nice balance. So maybe now, now that we have that good balance, we can play a little bit more with the dynamics of the piece. Um, so I'm noticing, for example, those first four measures now you start off, what's that dynamic, that very first dynamic you see? Do you see the, uh, that MF in the very, very beginning of your music? Yes. Yeah, so MF, mezzo forte, that's kind of like a middle volume, right? And then we uh, go four bars in and we see, let's see, so we see the, that mark that looks kind of like this, right? That, that day crescendo mark, that means we're going to be slowly getting quieter there. And then on measure five, what's that marking you see underneath those Fs? Um. MP, yeah, so MP, that's mezzo piano. So that means, that doesn't mean like really quiet, that doesn't mean the, the quietest you can play, but it does mean a little bit quieter than mezzo forte, than that medium volume. Um, and let me see if we have any others here. Yeah, okay, so those are the only two written dynamics in the piece, but one of the things we can work on is trying to have a little bit more of that sound variety because that's going to make the piece more interesting, more fun to listen to. So if we start it a little bit stronger, not, not super loud, right, because it's still a medium volume, um, and then we kind of we bring it down a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit uh, when you start playing that melody. And then maybe when we get to, uh, since it doesn't really tell us any other markings, uh, Sometimes that means we can get a little bit more creative with our dynamics. Um, so for example, whenever we play, when we're playing at like the really low end of the keyboard and then the really high end of the keyboard, which do you automatically want to make louder, do you think? Um, probably the lower. The lower end, yeah, that's a good guess. But see, the thing with the lower end is it doesn't really need very much help. It's got some really thick strings when you're up, when you're playing on an actual real piano. I shouldn't say a real piano, um, a stringed piano instead of an electronic keyboard. The lower, uh, the lower notes have thicker strings, and they usually project their sound pretty well. Whereas remember, the melody is usually in the right hand, right? So when we get to those high notes, we usually have a tendency to want to bring those up a little bit. So when you get to measure 14, you see where that is on the bottom of the page? Yeah. 
So when we get to measure 14, do we want to make that a little louder or a little softer, do you think? A little louder? Yeah, I think a little bit louder there, because at that point, you're pretty much playing the same melody, right? So when you're playing, when you're repeating a melody, it can help to do something a little bit different. So maybe we bring that up in volume and help make that a little bit more interesting. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. Let's try really quick with the dynamics. We're not going to play too much here. Let's say, let's say we'll just start at the beginning and we'll just stop at measure 13. Does that sound good? Yeah. Well, yeah. So remember, we started a little bit stronger and we get to that uh, first melody and we bring it down a little bit, just a bit. And let's see if, yeah, if we can uh, make some interesting dynamics there whenever you're ready. Beautiful, very nicely done. All righty, let me see what else we have in here. Um, yeah, you've no, you've you've got a very good handle on this piece. You have some very nice connections going on. Um, and like I said, I love the balance between your hands. Um, so I think that main thing is just to make sure when we're playing to kind of keep our posture nice and rooted. Um, and remember, we're not twisting as much when we're trying to reach those higher or lower notes on the keyboard. We want to stay nice and rooted and try to just lean back and forth with our torso instead of twisting around. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome, thank you very much. You were beautiful playing today. Yay, all right, one last hand for Liliana, yeah! All right, Waylon, Xander, and Liliana, I am very proud of all of you. You did a great job. Uh, last thing before we go is I wanna take some screenshots so that I can share it. All right, give me just a sec. Everyone, let me <laughs> switch to my gallery view. Oh. I want to light on myself. Okay, everyone, I'm going to take a couple. Look cute. Ah! Another one. Hold on. Shift. What is that? Windows shift. S. Oh, wait, hold on. Ah! Here we go. Boop. And save. All right, and last one. Ready? All right. I will be sure to share those images. I will be sure to polish the video and send that out to everybody. Um, Waylon, Sander, Leliana, beautiful job. Anything else that I'm missing? No? All right, it's been great. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful job. The horizon is ours.